What if I told you that Blender 4.0's new update made your renders look better automatically? You'd probably say something like, that's a stupid clickbait title. But it's true, and we're gonna be looking at why in this video. We're gonna be going through the new shader and how you can utilize it. It's really simple. We're also going to be looking at the new color space option that has been added, both of which will help improve your renders. And then as a bonus, if you stay till the end of the video, I'm gonna show you this little mesh swapping technique that I've been using on my short film to save a ton of time, but let's dive in. Now, first up on how to automatically improve your renders, we're gonna be talking about the new color spaces. Now, if you don't understand what color spaces are, I can recommend this very technical video here, which I will link to in the description. But the very simple way to think about it is that computers don't have eyes, so they just see color as a linear value. However, we as humans see color on a curve. By using these color transforms, it essentially tone maps the color and presents it to us in a final setting. Now, you may remember that we went from sRGB to Filmic a while back, and we saw a vast improvement in our Blender renders with the colors where we were able to retain a lot more lighting information and fall off and get more realistic renders. And you may recall that when that feature came out, if you were around, we had to adjust how we did our lighting. Super bright lights and things will do much better in Filmic than they do in sRGB because the tone mapping is different. Well, now in Blender 4.0, we have a new family transform from Filmic to AGX. So why are they switching color spaces? Well, this new color space actually allows you to get much better values when it comes to very bright areas. Because within Filmic, you're still losing some detail in those bright areas, and this seeks to improve that a bit more. This also helps with some of the color saturation and views as well, which you can see in some of these examples here. And it's as simple as just ensuring that your color space down here is set to AGX. And you can see that by changing that, you can see that my colors have changed. You can see that I'm now seeing a lot more detail here in the grass. Whereas if I go back to Filmic, you can kind of see that I'm getting a very kind of saturated wash across everything. So that's a pretty exciting new update in Blender 4.0 that just kind of gives us better renders from the start. My dynamic VFX pack is now on sale at Blender Market, and this has completely customizable VFX assets that you can drag and drop right into your viewport, both EV and Cycles compatible. If you're interested, you can also go check out a free sample pack. Also, if you're interested in my Patreon, I have materials, projects, time lapses, video walkthroughs, and discounts available there as well. Now we're gonna dive into the version two principal BSDF node. Now this has a lot of improvements. We're about to go through all of them, but in short, rendering with this node will just give you better materials because a lot of systems have been improved. Now, one big thing that is different with this is they've improved the energy conservation. If you don't know what that means, it essentially means that it maintains the brightness of your material with the lighting. If you remember in old versions of Blender, when you would switch over to things like glass, it would suddenly get very dark and be hard to kind of get the lighting to pass through your material. Things like that have been improved. Now here I've pulled in one of my fabric materials from the Crafty Asset Pack, and that's because one of the big things they've improved is the sheen factor on fabrics. So this new sheen dropdown that we have here uses a microfiber shading model. Now this acts as a top layer above the emission and the coat layer. So what that means is it can also be used to simulate dust on materials. Here, for example, you can see that I can go ahead and turn this weight way up and I can go ahead and change this color here to whatever I want. And we can start creating either a more stylized look for our fabric, but we can also get much more realistic light wrapping around our objects, thanks to this new microfiber shading model. Now let's talk about how the normal map looks better now as well. So you can see here, I have it set to a strength of one. Now, previously, when you imported normal maps, a lot of times in Blender, they would actually break unless if you set it at quite a low value. And if you don't know what that looks like, I can go ahead and crank this way up and you can see that our normal map is introducing all these kind of black artifacts. Now that has been improved so that when you import your normal maps at a strength of one, they should behave much more naturally and thus give you better looking renders. Now let's talk about how metal can be improved as well with this new node. Here is an aluminum brushed node from my crafty asset pack. And we're gonna be taking a look here at the specular menu. So it's worth noting that in this new version, the index of refraction is now controlling both the reflection and transmission from a single point, which is great as well, helping you not to make mistakes there. 
but also from multi-scatter GGX will actually give you better renders. Now this existed before, however, in this new update, they've improved it so it doesn't have a hit on performance or your normal maps. So now you can pretty much use this as a default option and get better renders there. Also, the tint option now works as a kind of edge tinting when working with metal. So I can go ahead here, and if I wanna kind of give my metal a kind of cooler look there, you can see that if I put it something extreme, it's easier to see. We can see how I can kind of do that. Now this isn't realistic per se, but this does give us more artistic control over our metal as well, which is exciting. You can also see here that they've combined the anastrophic numbers under here under specular as well. The subsurface scattering has changed a bit too. So now instead of having its own color input, it will pull that from the base color value up here. So these will now be the same. You of course have all this previous features as well. And then you can go ahead here and adjust the scale as well with this new scale slider, which can kind of help increase the intensity of that as well. Next up, let's talk about this coat layer. So by turning this coat up, you can see here that we are getting this sheen. So I have this material plugged into my emission color and my base color. And despite the emission being set to one here, you can see that I am still getting that shine over it and getting that nice reflection down here, but still maintaining that glossy overlook. And that's because the coat actually renders on top of the emissive layer. And that is intentional because that makes this perfect for doing things like phone screens, monitors, or whatever other type of reflective grass screens you might want to do. And lastly, under the hair node, we now have a new scattering model. And this one is actually a bit more realistic. You can see here how the color feels a bit more natural there as it goes out into the tips. However, it is also going to take a bit longer to render. So that one requires a bit of a trade-off, but it is nice to have that option. Now, lastly, I promised to show you this kind of cool mesh swapping technique. And this actually came in super handy when I was working on my short film and I was doing the credit sequence here and I kept making updates to the credits and needing to swap them. However, rather than just using a text object, I was using a lot of effects, having to convert them to mesh and change a bunch of things. So it was getting difficult to keep making the edits and I discovered this mesh swapping technique. So if you see here, I have two variations of the credits here. And when you grab your objects here, if you're making alterations and things like that, and this comes in really handy when you're trying to swap the mesh on a character rig, for example, you can go ahead and come down here to the data tab. And up here, you will notice that your mesh here has a name. And if you click this, you can see all the other meshes in the scene. So let's say here that I originally wanted my credit to be created by Southern Shoddy and I decided I wanted to add created and animated by Southern Shoddy, then what I could do is go ahead, grab my mesh here, change this from created to created and animated there, and you'll see that it will update the mesh to this new mesh and maintain its position. So you can see how that'd be incredibly helpful when it's already placed in a scene, animated, or other things like that. So I hope this helps you save a ton of time. It's definitely helped me save a lot.